The Nightly Business Report. Good evening. Tonight, Sri Lanka strikes an agreement with the Asian Development Bank for a 100 million US dollar budget support loan. A special gazette notification has been issued officially declaring the supply of electricity and distribution of fuel products as essential services. The Colombo stock market experiences mixed sentiments, starting the week in the red but rebounding into positive territory today. And US judge rules Google violated antitrust law, creating illegal search engine monopoly. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. The Finance Ministry announced that Sri Lanka has signed an agreement with the Asian Development Bank for a 100 million US dollar budget support loan. This loan, which spans a 25-year period, is specifically linked to power sector policy reforms. The Power Sector Reforms and Financial Sustainability Program consists of three sub-programs and a loan of 100 million US dollars will be mobilized once the policy actions relevant for each of the sub-programs are completed. The program will support establishment of independent and financially sustainable electricity utilities. Also, it will support streamlined and accelerated development of renewable energy sources for electricity generation under the reform areas. The loan has an interest rate of 2% and will be repaid over 25 years including a 5-year grace period. Treasury Secretary Mahinda Sirivardhana and ADB Sri Lanka Contra Director Takafumi Kodono signed the agreement. The Minister of Finance, Economic Stabilization and National Policies will be the executing agency of the BOB program and the Minister of Power and Energy will implement the program in collaboration with the Ceylon Electricity Board, Sri Lanka Sustainable Energy Authority and Sri Lanka Electricity Company Private Limited. A special gazette notification has been issued officially declaring the supply of electricity and all related services along with the supply and distribution of petroleum products and fuel as essential services. This significant directive was communicated by the Presidential Secretary Saman Ekanayaka following the instructions of President Ranu Vikramasinghe. The communique released yesterday underscores the critical nature of these services and the government's commitment to ensuring their uninterrupted interrupted provision. The notification was published in accordance with the powers vested in the President under Section 2 of the Essential Public Services Act No. 61 of 1979, highlighting the legal framework supporting this declaration. Sri Lanka's Cabinet of Ministers has approved a proposal to finalize a draft Indonesia-Sri Lanka preferential trade agreement in December of 2024, which is to be signed in March of 2025. The Cabinet also granted approval for the integration of public sector information technology systems to enhance the efficiency and the quality of the public service. A statement from the Government Information Department said today that the consequent to the Second Trade Discussion Committee meeting on the proposed agreement, which was held on the 15th and 16th of July in Colombo, the Cabinet has considered the matters pertaining to the agreement presented by President Rane Vikramasinghe. The President has proposed that the draft ISLPTA to be finalised in December. The statement said both the parties have agreed to sign the agreement in March 2025. In July, Sri Lanka's private sector trade body was in negotiations with the Indonesian officials on a preferential trade agreement which it hoped increase exports to the Southeast Asian archipelago. Meanwhile, the cabinet approval has been granted for the integration of public sector information technology systems to enhance the efficiency and the quality of the public service. Issuing a statement, the Department of Government Information said that it has been recognized that it is necessary to integrate information technology systems existing in the public institutions, including corporations and statutory boards to perform the functions effectively and optimistically through the verification of information and minimization of duplication of data with the objective of enhancement of efficiency and quality of the public service. <laughs> The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce launched its landmark policy document, Vision 2030, designed to steer Sri Lanka towards sustainable and inclusive development by the year 2030. The inaugural copy of this comprehensive economic plan was presented to President Ranil Vikramasinghe. The document will also be distributed to political party leaders, the central bank governor and the treasury secretary to promote a bipartisan approach towards prioritizing the national economy and public welfare. Vision 2030 
30 sets forth a five-year economic plan focusing on various sectors, each with targeted goals and strategic policy interventions aimed at transforming Sri Lanka's economic landscape. Among the critical sectors it addresses are healthcare, agriculture, education and logistics, while also emphasizing key enablers like tax reforms, trade reforms, digitalization and power and energy reforms. In a decisive announcement by the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka, it was communicated that the payments for rooftop solar power plants will remain unchanged. This development comes amidst recent concerns raised by the Renewable Energy Protectors Association. This decision, detailed in a circular issued by the Ceylon Electricity Board General Manager Dr. Narendra Silva, confirms that the price 37 per unit of solar electricity imposed in 2022 will continue to be valid. The circular dated 29 July amends the effective date of rooftop solar PV schemes to 25th October 2022 while maintaining the rest of the content unchanged. The REPA has voiced apprehensions over the government's decision to reduce tariffs rates for new rooftop solar and renewable energy projects effective from the 1st of July 2024. The new tariffs announced by the Power and Energy Minister Kanchan Vijayasekara are based on a 2022 formula that considers the US dollar rate, interest and other economic factors. Let's take a short commercial break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The Colombo stock market experienced mixed sentiments this week, starting in the red but managing to rebound into positive territory today. By the end of today's market session, both indices recorded gains, reflecting a varied performance over the week. To get more on today's trading session, we connect with Nagosan Balachantaran from Capital Alliance Securities. After sell-downs were witnessed yesterday in global equity markets bringing out the worst performance since the pandemic, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a positive note compared to the previous trading session. The market ended at 11,293 points, marking a 42-point increase from the previous session with a turnover of 580 million rupees. The SL20 index also experienced an upward movement of 20.72 points to end the day at 3,235 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors with high turnovers recorded on John Keyes Holdings and Valuable One PLC. The top five gainers for the day were SMB Leasing, Non-Voting, Nation Lanka Finance, Blue Diamonds Jewelry Voting and Non-Voting and Tess Agro PLC. The top five losers for the day were Malbatha Black Plantations, Voting and Non-Voting, Asia Asset Finance, Renuka Hotels and Haley's Fiabra PLC. Yesterday, several Asian markets displayed signs of concerns with the Nikkei index experiencing its largest ever drop. This significant decline had a notable impact on global markets as investor sentiment turned cautious. The ripple effects were also felt in the Sri Lankan market, which mirrored the global trend of heightened volatility and uncertainty. Let's get an analysis on this and for that we have Vinodini Rajapupati standing by from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. Yesterday, the Nikkei in stock index plummeted by 12.4%, its largest ever drop since the Black Monday crash in 1987, sparking a global market downturn. The sharp decline was triggered by the Bank of Japan raising interest rates to their highest level in 17 years, causing the yen to significantly strengthen against the USD and making Japanese stocks and exports more expensive for foreign investors and buyers. Subsequently, on Monday, the Japanese yen reached a seven-month high against the USD, pressurizing stocks further. Major Asian, European and US markets also fell substantially. Fears of an impending slowdown in the American economy have also impacted the stock market in the UK, Europe and the US. However, the Nikkei stock index rebounded today, jumping by 10.23% or 3,217 points, marking its biggest one-day gain in points since October 2008. Today's gain was explained as a technical rebound after the sharp fall yesterday. However, short-term volatility remains as the market believes the USD has not yet stabilized against the yen. 
Taiwan's main stock index also, also jumped by almost 3.4% after a record 8.4% drop on Monday. A recovery is expected only after Japanese companies report their first half earnings in October or following the US presidential election in November. Meanwhile, the Colombo Bores experienced a similar trend yesterday, plummeting to over a four-month low and losing 191 points due to this impact and also the political uncertainty surrounding the upcoming election. However, the market bounced back today, gaining 42 points. Thank you. Gold prices inched up today and analysts noted that the non-yielding metals outlook remains positive as latest commentary from Federal Reserve officials and data point towards bigger U.S. interest rate cuts. Spot gold rose 0.2% at $2,412.79 per ounce. Bullion fell as much as 3% in the previous session, caught in a global sell-off driven by fears of a U.S. recession. U.S. gold futures gained 0.4% percent to $2,453.40. Fed policymakers pushed back against the notion that weaker than expected July jobs data means the economy is in recessionary freefall. All prices paired gains in volatile trade today as fears of an escalation in the Middle East conflict and a drop in production at Libya's largest Shahara oil field raised the prospect of tight supplies. Brent crude futures were up 12 cents or 0.16 percent to $76.42 a barrel, all while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures were up 22 cents or 0.3 percent to $73.16. Both contracts gained over $1 a barrel earlier in the session. However, buying was capped by a weak demand outlook in China, while a global market recovery from a sell-off yesterday provided support. The Sri Lankan rupee has largely depreciated against the U.S. dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today compared to yesterday. According to Commercial Bank, the buying rate of the U.S. dollar has dropped from 296 rupees and 43 cents to 296 rupees and 18 cents, while the selling rate has also reduced from 306 rupees and 25 cents to 306 rupees. Now let's observe how the rupee behaved against some other global currencies. Short break now, updates from the corporate world coming right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Sri Lanka's Browns Investments said it had completed the acquisition of Lipton Tea Companies in Kenya and Rwanda from their UK and Netherlands-based parents. The company said in a stock exchange filing that this acquisition was executed through their wholly owned subsidiary, B Commodities MEFZD, incorporated in the United Arab Emirates. The company said that the acquisition of Lipton Teas and Infusions Tanzania Limited Another target company is still pending due to the outstanding approval from the Fair Competition Commission of Tanzania. It had entered into a sales and purchase agreement with Ekaterra Hold Co. UK Limited and Netherlands-based Ekaterra Group Holdings BV and Ekaterra Group Holdings 2 BV to buy control of the African firms. Brown's Investments bought 100% of Rwanda-based Lipton Teas and Infusions Rwanda Limited and will buy 100% of Tanzania-based Lipton Teas and Infusions Tanzania Limited. The Ministry of Sports and Youth Affairs, alongside the Ministry of Tourism, is organizing the Sri Lanka Sports Fiesta 2024, which will take place from the 16th of August to the 18th of August in Colombo. 
Powered by Dialogue Asia at PLC, this event promises to be the largest national sports extravaganza ever held in Sri Lanka and the first of its kind in South Asia. The mega fiesta will feature over 3000 athletes competing in seven thrilling team sports. Designed to showcase local talent and inspire the next generation of athletes, the Sri Lankan Sports Fiesta 2024 aims to provide a platform for the athletes to display their skills and compete at a high level. Spectators can look forward to an array of exciting matches with each sport offering its unique own brand of entertainment. The organizers plan to make this an annual event, providing ongoing opportunities for athletes and continuous excitement for fans every year. Cricket matches will be held at the Bloomfield and Thurston grounds, while rugby and football matches will be take place at the race course grounds. Volleyball will be played at the Royal College Indoor Sports Complex and netball matches are expected at the Torrington grounds. Hockey games will occur at the Extra Turf and basketball matches will be played on a 3 on 3 basketball court. The Commercial Bank of Ceylon has been proclaimed Sri Lanka's best bank for ESG at the 2024 edition of the Euro Money Awards for Excellence, generating international recognition for the bank's commitment to environmental, social and governance frameworks. The Euro Money Awards for Excellence are highly respected in the global banking industry and represent the pinnacle of achievement for banks and bankers that set the standards in the banking field around the world. The the prestigious Euromoney Award won by Commercial Bank recognizes the impact of numerous internal and external initiatives and processes implemented by the bank to promote and monitor compliance with best practices of the ESG framework across the bank's network of branches. The bank said it prioritizes minimizing environmental impact through energy efficient operations, reducing its carbon footprint and funding in renewable energy projects to support a greener future. Richard Pierce and Company PLC has announced its first interim dividend payment for the 2024-2025 financial year, signifying a notable milestone for the company. The dividend payment date is scheduled for the 3rd of September with the ex-dividend date declared as the 14th of August. This decision underscores the company's commitment to returning value to its shareholders reflecting its strong financial performance and stability as of 30th june 2024 the top 4 shareholders of richard peris and company plc play a pivotal role in the company's ownership structure skyworld overseas holdings limited stand as the largest shareholder with 25.37% of the shares reflecting a significant stake and likely influential voice in the company's strategic direction camellia consulting corporation holds 17.49% of the shares further indicating a substantial investment and interest in the company's performance this diverse shareholder base demonstrates a broad spectrum of confidence in richard peris and company plc's future prospects this move reinforces the company's robust financial health capable of supporting its distributions without necessitating shareholder approval which streamlines the process and exemplifies the company's efficient corporate governance <laughs> Allianz Lanka, one of Sri Lanka's leading insurers and a part of Allianz SE, proudly supports Allianz as the worldwide insurance partner of the Olympic and Paralympic Games. With the Paris 2024 Games, this partnership symbolizes Allianz's commitment to athletes and the global promotion of Olympic and Paralympic values, excellence, friendship and respect. Since initiating this long-standing partnership in 2021, Allianz has provided comprehensive insurance coverage and a variety of services to the Olympics framework, supporting a large community of athletes worldwide. With the Paris 2024 Olympics happening now and Paralympics scheduled from August 28th to September 8th, Allianz's involvement ensures the games proceed with a focus on safety, security, and excellence. Allianz's collab collaboration with the Paralympic movement dates to 2006. Let's take a short commercial break. Global updates on the other side. Welcome back to the nightly business report. 
Asian equities rose, helped by bargain hunting after concerns over a hard landing in the U.S. drove a regional benchmark to its worst single-day drop since 2008. Regional equities came under pressure in the previous two sessions as investors worried about a potential U.S. recession. Meanwhile, the rapid surge in the yen triggered unwinding of carry trades across the globe, weighing on technology stocks. In addition to Japan, stocks bounced back today in technology heavy South Korea and Taiwan. Chinese stocks were mixed even as local brokerages talked up the prospects of the market in the face of a global sell-off. Wall Street's most watched gauge of investor anxiety logged its largest ever intraday jump and closed at its highest since October 2020 as traders scrambled to hedge against market volatility during a global sell-off fueled by U.S. recession fears. Wall Street's main indexes ended sharply lower on Monday as U.S. recession worries shook global markets and drove investors out of risky assets. The Dow dropped 2.6%. The S&P 500 shed 3 percent, and the Nasdaq nosedived nearly 3.5 percent. The recession concerns followed weak economic data from last week, including Friday's soft non-farm payrolls report. U.S. Treasury yields tumbled to their lowest level in a year, and a closely watched gap between two- and ten-year Treasury notes turned positive for the first time since July 2022, usually indicating the economy is heading into a downturn. Traders now see a more than 90 percent probability that the U.S. central bank will cut rates by 50 basis points in September, according to CME's FedWatch tool. Recent disappointing forecasts from the big U.S. tech companies added to fears, with the Nasdaq last week sliding into correction territory. Shares of Apple fell 4.8 percent on Monday after Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway halved its stake in the iPhone maker. The billionaire investor also let Berkshire's cash position soar to $277 billion. Tech giants NVIDIA, Microsoft and Alphabet also slid. Among the companies that bucked Monday's downturn, Pringles maker Kellanova, which soared more than 16 percent after a report said candy giant Mars was exploring a potential buyout of the company. A U.S. judge ruled that Google violated antitrust law, spending billions of dollars to create an illegal monopoly and become the world's default search engine. The first big win for federal authorities taking on big tech's market dominance. A U.S. judge ruled on Monday that Google violated antitrust law, spending billions of dollars to create an illegal monopoly and become the world's default search engine. It's the first big win for federal authorities taking on big tech's market dominance. Google controls about 90 percent of the online search market and 95 percent on smartphones. The ruling said it paid over $26 billion in 2021 alone to ensure that its search engine was the default on smartphones and browsers and to keep its dominant market share. Parent firm Alphabet said it plans to appeal the ruling. The legal wrangling could play out into next year or even 2026. The decision paves the way for a second trial to determine potential fixes, including a possible breakup of Alphabet. That would change the landscape of the online advertising world that Google has dominated for years. Now the ruling is also a green light to aggressive U.S. antitrust enforcers prosecuting big tech, a sector that has been under fire from across the political spectrum. Shares of Alphabet fell 4.5 percent on Monday amid a broad decline in tech shares as the wider stock market plunged over fears of a recession. And with that, we conclude today's nightly business report. Join us again tomorrow for more key updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anuradha Vikramasinghe. Have a good night.